Welcome back to the channel guys. So today's video is going to be an intro into state management in React Native. We're only going to be talking about state and props and not any third party library as of now. So as we all know, the basic concept behind React and React Native was to split your app up into separate components. So as we look here in our Airbnb app that we had created in our previous tutorial series, we had split our app up into its own individual components. Starting from the top, this search bar here was a separate component by itself. Followed by this guests and dates tag, we had created one component called tag and then we had plugged it in twice and changed its data to display two different tags. Similarly, we had this horizontal scroll view inside which we created this image component with a text at the bottom and then we repeated that again by changing its data. So like this, we combined these different components into a parent component to create our application. So here in front of us, I have an empty React Native project that I created with Expo. Talking more about components, there are basically two types of components that you can create in React Native. The first one is a class component, which you can see here is created by default for us. And the other one is a functional component, or which is also referred to as a stateless component. So remember we were talking about state. So the main difference between a class component and a functional component is that a class can maintain its own state whereas a functional component cannot. Another difference between functional components and class components is that functional components do not have access to the lifecycle methods available to us in React Native. So what if I wanted to create a functional component? How would I do that? We'll just say const, name the component something, suppose we call it header, put an equal to followed by two rounded brackets. Then we can use the fat arrow syntax, which ES6 provides us. Put in two curly braces, followed by the return statement and we can pass in whatever we want here. So we'll just return a view and a text that says header. This is one way of creating a functional component. We can also shorten this further by getting rid of this return here and the curly braces. And this would still work. Now let's see how practically we can combine our component along with state and props to manage our state. I'm just going to get rid of this header here. And I'll create a constructor inside our class, which will hold our state. So we'll say constructor. So to create our state object, we'll say this dot state is equal to, let's assume our app is an e-commerce app and we need to keep track of the number of products that the user has selected. So we'll say product count and we'll set that to zero. And as you can see here, we get an error saying this is not allowed before super. So whenever you create a constructor, always pass in super after that. And now the error is gone. Next, we need to create a button component which will update this state. So in our project folder, let's create a new folder called components. Inside that, we'll create a new file called custom button.js. Here, I'll import some boilerplate code, which is a class component. The snippet for this is available in the description. But in our case, the button component is not going to have its own state. All we wanted to do is just display the button. So let's change this class component to a functional component. Let's rename it to custom button and then get rid of class and say const custom button is equal to, we'll get rid of the component from here, put in rounded brackets and use the fat arrow function. Also a functional component cannot have a render method. So we'll get rid of that. And there we have our first functional component ready. Inside this, let's import button here. And instead of returning a view with a text, let's return the button here. So we'll say button, the button should have a title. So we'll say add product. And we also don't need these styles here at the bottom. The button should also have an on press. So let's say on press. For now, let's just say alert add product. Soon we'll replace this with props to update our product count. Now let's import this in our app.js. So here on top, let's say import custom button from components slash custom button. And instead of passing in the text here, let's just pass in our custom button. And as you can see, we're seeing add product visible there. Let's also display the product count below this. So we'll say text and pass in this dot state dot product count. Now we need to click this add product button and we want it to update this product count. 
Now we need to understand that our custom button is just a presentational component. It has no idea of what the state is, and it should not have any idea as well. It also cannot change the state directly inside its own component. We must change the state in the parent component where the state exists. So here we'll create a method called add product using the fat arrow functions, which will automatically bind this to the scope of this component. And here we'll say this dot set state, update the product count to this dot state dot product count plus one. Now we can pass this method down to our custom button using props. And I just realized I've named my custom button as custom bottom. I'll just change that to custom button. And here let's create a prop called on press. You can name it whatever you like and make it point to the function that we created. So we'll say this dot add product. Now inside our custom button, we can get rid of the alert and say props dot on press. So if we click add product, we see we still get an error because custom button is not aware of what props is. So here inside the rounded brackets, we can put in props. Now, if we click on add product, we see our product count is increasing. Now, just a couple of things more about set state here. You need to understand that this dot set state is not a synchronous method. That is suppose you try and do this thrice. You will assume that they should update the count three times. Let's try this. As we can see, every time we click, it's only increasing once and not thrice. That's because react batches these set state calls in order to improve performance of the react native app. This makes sure that the render method is limited and is not constantly called. If you want this to work synchronously, you can use a callback method to make it work. So here after the first set state, you can put a comma, put in a callback method. And here you can put in another set state. You can also use this to navigate the user to another screen once the state is updated or also to display an alert message. Now let's try this out again. So if we click add product, we see that it happens twice. There's also another handy feature that's available with set state. Let's just get rid of this. And that is using the previous state. So instead of using this dot state dot product count plus one, we can use this dot set state, pass in the previous state. And then using the fat arrow function, we'll put in rounded brackets and then curly brackets to update our state again. So we'll say product count and set that to brief state dot product count plus one. Let's remove this earlier set state, save this out. And now if we test it, add product should increase the product count. So in this video, we covered class components, functional components, the basics of state and using props.